Austin Mock does a, he's got a formula that he breaks down. He uses it on The Athletic, and it ranks teams, and he's ranked these based on play-by-play -play data from last year, returning production, recruiting rankings, and transfers. And as you can see, Tennessee is 17th on the list. The problem is that would put them ninth in the SEC. I'm not sure that his formula is right, that the top, the top 17 teams in the country will have nine of them from the SEC, but that kind of ties into that recruiting thing we looked at that chart a couple of segments ago. 17th, all right, so that's a little surprising that they're ninth behind Ole Miss, Texas A&M, Missouri, Oklahoma. A lot of all fans won't like that. All right, now let's look at the win totals. This is interesting. Uh, Josh and Swain do a great job. They put out a newsletter every week, and I had missed this, but Josh put a note in there. You should sign up for that thing. Uh, Josh put a note in there about the fact that the wind totals are slipping on some of these sites. Yep. And as you can see, it was 9.5 a, a few weeks ago just about everywhere. MGM still has them at 9.5. Caesar's still at 9.5. Bally's is at 9. FanDuel, DraftKings, and the site Sports Betting Dime all have it down to 8.5. Okay, Tyler, you gamble, I've heard. Not very well. Uh, Allegedly. Not I, you know, I, don't, I don't ride with Ivan. But, okay. Allegedly. Uh, are folks nationally underestimating Tennessee? Or are we locally overestimating Tennessee? I think perhaps locally we might be overestimating Tennessee. Ooh, I thought um, you were going to go the other way. Yeah, okay. see, look at that. A little curveball for you. I Here's my belief, and you hear this phrase often. Well, you know, public, building those tall buildings in Vegas, they usually are on to something. I'm not saying that they have a perfect algorithm, but the house usually wins. This gives me a little bit of pause. And... The reason why it gives me a little bit of pause was because I've been adamant this year that I believe that Tennessee, at minimum, would be an 8-4, and 9-3. and three. Heck, I came on my radio show right after the Iowa win and said, that was a 10-2 team. And I might have been Tennessee Tyler homering it up a little bit, but that being said, I'm not saying that Vegas completely like a puppet or a ventriloquist makes me believe one way or the other. I think this is a pretty solid indicator, and I think they might be onto something, which gives me a little bit, again, a pause. Do okay. you think that the national media or whatever is dropping their win total because there's not as much hype around this team as there has been in years past? And I'm thinking people might credit that to the fact that Nico has been a part of this team since January of 2022, and right. we've really not seen anything from him. It so was the most quiet spring that. practice I've ever exactly. experienced. I mean, exactly. You had a basketball team that was winning, a baseball team that was winning, but it was a – quiet spring practice for a team yeah. that people are talking about as a potential playoff team. Well, I think so. even if you like rewind back to the, the Citrus Bowl against Iowa, like that was his first full start, full game, yeah. but what Iowa was showing you was to run the ball. He didn't have to air the ball out yeah. to go to get to the end zone. Just give it to Dylan Sampson and you win. So you're not seeing exciting plays from Nico. That's by design. So you lose the hype there and then you start looking at all these other teams who are causing a lot of noise. Are you putting more stock in them, not less stock in Tennessee. Well, let me, well, let's turn it around. I'm the questioner. Okay. <laughs> Tyler had his shot. I want to get your take. Okay. Over are, the, are, are locals overestimating Tennessee or are those people out there in the hinterlands underestimating Tennessee? I think they're underestimating. I definitely think Tennessee can go out there and get nine wins. Who are their three losses? Obviously, I think two are going to be Georgia and Alabama. Who's the third one? Is it going to be a team they shouldn't lose to? Is it going to be Oklahoma? Is it going to be Florida? I think everybody else they should beat. Um, so I think anything lower than nine, you're underestimating Tennessee. At this moment, quickly, three games. I mentioned it in segment one. They are favored in they're favored in nine of those twelve games. So it's if everything yep. plays out the way it should, nine and three, and depending on where you do your shopping, yeah, eight you and a half is yeah. there. You, there's your hook, Jimmy. I've, I've given them two options: overestimating, underestimating. Are they just being estimated? Meaning, <laughs> have they got it right? Do you think the the it should be eight and a half? Is kind of your over under. Or do you think it should be nine wanna, and a half? I want to share this with this motley crew. There you go. <laughs> oh, I, I think so oh, good. I think that uh, nine and a half is the right number. I would be surprised if Tennessee doesn't win at least nine. Mm -hmm. So I, to me, I'm between nine and ten, Gosh, not nine eight and nine. So I, I think they're underestimating a little bit. What has changed? Why would I, you drop the the total? What are well, they, is this? Are they basing this, is, this on people betting? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's they're basing it on what people out there are thinking, yeah. so the they're dropping it. But the Wizard of Oz behind the cape, behind the curtain, all they've seen is 19 pass attempts in four quarters from Nico Iamaliava. Yeah, You're I think essentially like weighing, will he, make, will, he come to, will he reach what we believe his expectations right. are year one? The same 19 they had, that he had in February. 
So why does it change between them and now? I think it's because they're putting more stock in other teams, not yeah. that they're putting less stock in Tennessee, but because there's no conversation around Tennessee and there's tons of conversations about Oklahoma and what they're doing in the portal, yep. there's more attention. You're like, oh, maybe they could be actually really yeah. good. And see, State's number 21 in EA Sports. Like, there's just a lot of attention on other teams, it so also, by default. It also depends on who's who you're talking to. Because right now yeah. you came out of the SEC media days, guys like Greg McElroy. The, the Chris Doyle, they're talking Tennessee up right now. Mm-hmm. So they're going in that direction. Everybody's picking their own teams right, right now, and it's starting to take off. It is interesting, though, whether it ties back to spring where it was very quiet or right now the hype isn't really building nationally for this Tennessee team. It, usually we look around here and it's – you know, late July, that means you're going from 9 to 10 wins. And by the end of August, I expect 11 wins. And by the start of the first game, everybody has that, I got a gut feeling they're going to win the national title. <laughs> yep. So now you should be on the uptick right now. It is interesting that this team's just kind of And I think what's line. interesting when you were mentioning it being quiet during spring, go to the spring game, the orange and white game, mm-hmm. and it's actually Gaston Moore, the quarterback that came from UCF with Heupel, yeah. that kind of stole the show. And that was, again, by design. Nico was not out there very much. It was very much the second and third stringers that got yeah. a ton of snaps. And I think that's why there's not well, a ton of conversations. One of the few people that hadn't changed his mind is Sterling Hinton. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, they've it's, been 12 and 0 since uh, January. 12? Let's see. I'm sorry. Regular SEC season. championship yeah. games Regular season and then three tournament. playoff games. So 16, yeah. I think, Sterling. All right. Uh, when we come, and I'll get a text in a minute saying, oh, baby. Yeah. When we come back, we now know what the NCAA's legal settlement means for college football rosters. Oh, baby. That is going to be a mess. They, they don't believe in simple solutions. So we'll come back and explain that. What's it mean for teams like Tennessee? What's it going to do to college football rosters? If you thought things were about to get simpler in college sports, Think again. Come on back on the Sports Source.